What are you prepared to do for the one who made you? That's a question. What are you prepared to do or to sacrifice for the one who created you? If you are prepared to do anything for him, then the path you've chosen is the path to success. And if you're not prepared to do much for him, what relationship do you expect to have with the one whom you are going to go back to? It's a very interesting question because people say, I'm struggling, I'm suffering, I'm going through hardship, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. The times are tough, the whole world is suffering. But what's your connection with the owner of everything? Do you have a connection? If the answer is yes, then inshallah it will help you get even closer to him. If the answer is no, perhaps it's a moment for you to think to yourself, how best can I improve the relationship? And as you improve in that relationship, wallahi, your problems will become less. The difficulty and hardship becomes easy to handle with Allah. So every time ask yourself, what am I prepared to do for Allah? If Allah said this, am I ready to do it? Do you know many times the answer is no with many people? And they don't realize it until they ask themselves, I don't need to know your answer. You don't need to know my answer. We need to know our own answer for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because before I was born, I was with Allah. After I die, I will return to Allah. While I'm here, I need to be with Allah. Shaytan comes in and distracts us in order to make us think that we are here to enjoy ourselves without Allah in the equation. But Allah tells us, it is he who created for you, O mankind, everything that is on earth. What was it created for? For you and I. To enjoy, to make use of, but within the limits of Allah. Within the limits of Allah. On earth, whatever there is, mashallah. If you want it, you need to get it in a way that is pleasing to Allah. And don't do it in a way that is displeasing to Allah. And if you have fallen, what do you do? You know, when you drive in Jakarta, mashallah, there is a lot of uh, traffic, right? A lot of traffic. They say there is a big masala of machet, right? It takes you half an hour to come from across the road to this side of the road because you need to make one U-turn. You know the story, right? So imagine if someone bumps your car. Someone bumps your car. It's not a nice feeling, right? But if they bump your car, are you just going to sit in the car, switch it off and go to sleep? And say, okay, they bumped my car. Now it's, you have to get out, right? You have to see, you have to solve the problem because very quickly you have to keep going to where you are going. I cannot forget where I am going simply because I made an accident or because someone made an accident with me. I need to get up. I need to come out. I need to talk. I need to exchange numbers. I, I don't know what the law is in your country. You might need to involve the traffic police or whatever it might be, but solve the matter quickly and keep going. Keep going. There might be a slight delay, but you will still get to your destination when you arrive at your destination you will say i'm sorry i'm late right they will say better late than never mashallah better late than never alhamdulillah i want to tell you we have a destination that destination is jannah mashallah paradise we are going if you've made an accident while you're heading to Jannah, you don't have to chill, stop and say, right, forget about Jannah. Let me just do what I'm doing here. No, you quickly make amends. You quickly try to panel beat your vehicle and you keep going. Better late than never. But inshallah, we will get there on time by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mercy of Allah will bring you to Jannah and will bring me to Jannah by his mercy. Amin. So my beloved brothers and sisters, Listen and listen very carefully. Adam alayhi salam, the first of our species, 
When Allah Almighty told him that I am going to make one rule for you only, what was the rule? Do not eat from this tree. And what did he do? He ate from the tree. Subhanallah. When you tell your child that, you know what, don't drive fast. And what does he do? He drives fast. Boom, bang. I told you not to drive fast. He says, ah, dad, I'm sorry. Okay. You still buy him another car. And the other car is faster, unfortunately. Right? So you need to know Allah Almighty instructed Adam and Hawa not to eat from the tree. Don't eat from the tree. And at a certain point, shaitan trapped them into believing that, you know what, if I eat from this tree, I'm going to get this and I'm going to get that and I will love it and whatever. So they ate from the tree. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was upset with them, but he forgave them. He forgave them as soon as they said, oh Allah, forgive us. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Beautiful dua to seek forgiveness. Oh our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. Why ourselves? Because when you do wrong, you don't harm Allah. And when you do good, you don't benefit Allah. Your good will benefit you. Your harm will harm you, not Allah. So when you've done wrong, you say, Oh Allah, I wronged myself. We have wronged ourselves. If you don't forgive us and if you don't have mercy on us, we will be the losers. So we want you to forgive us and have mercy on us. Why the two things? They could have just said, we want you to forgive us. That's all. They did not need to say, and have mercy on us. But I can tell you why they said we have mercy on us. Because when you and I go to paradise, we will enter paradise only with the mercy of Allah. Not with my good deeds. My good deeds, what they do for me is they will call on the mercy of Allah. When I do good then Allah will have mercy on me. When, I have, when Allah has mercy on me, I can go to Jannah. But my own good deeds, it's tough. I don't know. I have to say, oh Allah, please accept it from me. Have mercy on me. When I'm doing salah, five daily prayers. How many prayers in the day? How many? So many are just quiet. I only hear five from few people. How many prayers? Are you sure? Are you sure? We can do better, inshallah, isn't it? Who's going to do better? Inshallah. Say inshallah. 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 Five. It's five. It must be five. Don't make it four. You know, my, when I was young, my father used to tell me, you see, when you want to open a door, each key has teeth. Each key has teeth. You open the door. You know, these teeth are for that door. This teeth is for that door and so on. If you don't have five teeth on your key, how will you open the door of Jannah? That's what my dad used to tell me when I was little. Up to today, I understand it. Some other people say, oh, there is. I mean, when we were little, they used to say some, some things just to make us understand. Can I say something? They used to say, you know what? You want to communicate with Allah? There is a phone number. I say, phone number? How can there be a phone number? What is the phone number? Now, it's their way of explaining to others to say, well, the phone number is 24434. And you start thinking, what's going on? And the child is saying, I know, Fajr, Fahur, Asar, Maghrib, Isha. That is 24434. Yes. So now when you pick up the phone and start, that time when I was little, we dialed like this. Krr, krr. Krr, krr. Do you remember? Oh, you guys are old, man. <laughs> okay, subhanallah. Anyway, we dial the number and we are waiting. Where is it? It's not, it says wrong number. It's not ringing. It's, it's not the phone. It's only an example that they are giving you to say, please pray. So today I want to say, please pray. So I was saying, when you pray, you and I all are, inshallah, I hope that we pray. But when I pray, I say, Allahu Akbar and I'm standing, right? When I'm standing, tell me, what does shaitan do? What does he do to my mind? He, he makes it 
He makes it wonder, right? So it's moving this way, it's moving that way. I start thinking, oh no, I forgot to turn off the stove. All right. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman. Why? Because the stove is on. No, chill, relax. Shaitan is making you think things. Someone says, ah, let me, let me pray. But you know what? Now when you, when you start, then you start thinking, mm. you see, the time is like this. All sorts of thoughts come to your mind. Tell me, that prayer, you think it's going to help Allah? No way. Even if you had full concentration, it's not going to help Allah. It's going to help you. When you are done with your prayer, you did your best, right? You did your best. Nobody has 100% concentration in prayer. We have 80, 70, 60. I think when you go below 50, then there is a problem, right? Because then you don't know, did I do two or three? Three or two? Three or four, what is, I can't, ah, stop for Allah, right? But it's okay, there is a way to solve the problem. You can do sujood sahu. You know what is sujood sahu? So it means you offer prostration as a compensation for a mistake you might have made. It's called sujood sahu. So alhamdulillah, however, when you are done with your prayer, you say, oh Allah, please accept my prayer from me. Oh Allah, accept it from me as is and Allah accepts. So sometimes, People don't pray. They are not interested in praying. I know people, they have nothing in the world and still they don't pray. And I know some people, they have everything in the world and still they don't pray. So say for example, you have everything in the world and you are not praying and you don't, you are not bothered about Allah and you are not preparing your hereafter. What is the point of having everything in this world? I have money, I have power, I have whatever, I can do whatever, I have a lovely family, I have beautiful children, lovely spouse, everything is amazing, mashallah, tabarakallah. But what about if I were to die right now? Oh, people don't like to talk about death. When the ustad speaks about death, they say, La hawla wala. look at this guy, look at this guy. He needs to be like Mufti Meng, just speak about hope, happy, mashallah. No, death is a reality. If you don't want to talk about death, you have a problem. And many people don't want to talk about death. So what happens? They don't prepare. They don't prepare for the day they are going to meet with Allah. The day they are going to go back to Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you everything in the world and that made you go far from Allah, then you are at a loss. You need to get closer to Allah. The more you have, the, the better your relationship should be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah loves you, what does he do for you? Let me explain something very simple. You have the whole world. You have everything. You are so happy. You are enjoying the food, the drink, the holidays, the parties, whatever it might be. But you, don't, you, you are not worried about Allah. You have no connection. You don't think about the hereafter. You know what? If Allah loves you, what does he do? He takes something away, right? Why? Suddenly, <gasps> ah, my pain. I have a pain. What's the pain? I don't know. Let me run to the doctor, right? I have money. I will go to the best hospital in the world. So you start rushing. You catch a flight. You do whatever. You are gone. Where did you go? You went to the doctor. Doctor, something wrong with me. You don't know what Allah is doing for you. To you, this is a big problem. And then the doctor says, oh, I don't know what's wrong. It's, uh, we have to send you for more tests. And another doctor and a third. And you are in pain every day. Ah, something. Then the doctor tells you you have something. And he gives you the name of whatever sickness it might be. May Allah make it easy for everyone who is sick and ill. May Allah grant you cure. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant cure to all those who are suffering with every illness. Say Amin. So, when you don't know what happens, you think, ah, no. I will find out. After some tests and tests and tests, you find out. When you found out, now what happens? You think, okay, alhamdulillah, now I know what it is. Let me go for my medication. You get the medication. It's not working. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. What does Allah want? What does Allah want? Your date of death is already written. When you came in the world, your BB, you know what's a BB date? Best before. You see, when you have... 
When you have a, a, a bottle of drink, it says best before uh, 20 May 2025. If it is 21 May 2025, someone might say, put it aside. This is expired. Listen, it's not expired. It only says best before. It does not say you cannot have it after that, right? If it says expiry, then maybe it's a bit of a problem. But if it says best before, sometimes you can have it after that. It might taste even better, right? <laughs> best before, even better after. Can be, right? <laughs> May Allah forgive us. What I mean, I'm not encouraging you to have stuff that is expired, but I'm only giving you a small example to say, you and I, we have an expiry date, not a best before date. Expiry. That date and time is written. Allah knows, say, for example, if I'm supposed to die in a certain year, if I have no relation with Allah, if I have done some things Allah loves, He wants me to come to Him, He will, he will put some hardship in my life. Either you lose a job, either you lose a family member, you lose your spouse, you lose a limb, sometimes you have a robbery, sometimes you have a disaster, sometimes you have a sickness, sometimes something happens and you know what? You are tapped, you are tapped by Allah. Allah says, hey, come to us, come. Come, we put that in your life so you can build connection with us before you come back. So I tell you what happens. That sick person we were talking about earlier, now that he found out what it is, medication is not working. Now what does he do? He starts to cry. For the first time in his life, he's crying. That crying, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Wallahi, it's a good thing. In one way, it's good. For him, he might think it's bad. But if he says, oh Allah, Help me, cure me. Oh, for the first time in your life, you are crying to Allah. Wow. Subhanallah. Then he will get up. Forget about five salah. Six salah. Tahajjud is up already. Oh, Allah, give. Oh, what made you come to Tahajjud? Can you tell me? Was it a hardship or an ease? What was it? Mostly hardship makes you come towards Allah. If you have small amount of iman in your heart. Mostly hardship will make you come to Allah. If a hardship takes you away from Allah, khasirat dunya wal akhirah. That is the worst loss you can have. You lose the dunya, you lose the akhirah. You lose this world and you lose the hereafter. How can you let your hardship create a gap and distance between you and Allah? Keep on praying to Allah. Keep on connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will give you. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.